Lewis Hill here with Capital Combat Parlay with Garmami Sido and the only man who's busier than me, Nick Castiglia. How are you doing today, Nick? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, Nick, you're a competitor, a coach, a family man, a business entrepreneur, a matchmaker. What am I missing here? You're, you're kind of doing it all. Like, what's, what's driving you to do all these things? Because you don't have to do all these things. It's Saturday morning here in Canada, it's freezing. Uh, you could be on a cruise right now with an umbrella drink, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, we, we were kind of touching on it on the on the way in, and it's uh, and like uh, anybody who's been following my social media too, I've been kind of putting out the the good out there a lot more, and uh, what drives me is is helping other people, you know. And uh, I think at a young age, I just I I knew like I knew I wanted to be involved in martial arts, but I also knew I wanted to help as many people as I could. And uh, this is the vehicle in, in which I chose to do it, you know, and, and uh, I appreciate all the, you know, things you, you highlighted that I do. <laughs> I'm sure I'm missing a few, you know, know. Yeah. Um, however, I, I would like to say that like, it's, it, it's not just me. Like there's a, everywhere you, you would see me, you, there's a team, mm. there's a team behind us, you know, and, it, and uh, I, I couldn't take full credit for anything. You know, and uh, and like I'm just very grateful for that because if I didn't have this team, I I wouldn't be able to achieve some of the things that we've been achieving in in the last year. And I I always think to myself, I'm like, man, it it can't get crazier. You know, I can't get busier. And then it somehow does every year. We keep on reaching <laughs> further. So what eight shows this year was that? I was uh, no, it was nine since August. Nine since August. So I I I just because I. I counted since August because that's what I could remember <laughs> when I made that post, and uh, mm. and I just I didn't have the uh, I just didn't have the bandwidth at that time to look mm. further in the first half of the year. Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm sure I had I must have had like another six in the first half of the year or something like that. I I need to look back. But you're, you're talking about the team, right? The team dynamic, the team spirit. Uh, it's and as Lewis mentioned, you're involved. Uh, you're, you wear so many hats, and you're running one of uh, the most successful. Your team is running one of the most successful businesses. I say martial arts, but also businesses in the region. What What are some of the opportunities and challenges, uh, personally and professionally, when you're in this dynamic of, of managing upwards of six different locations for mar for martial arts? Well opportunities there's there's uh you know like there's so many you mm -hmm. know be, because you're running so many shows and we started running them in other cities as well so like for people who are competitors um like there's many places to be in ottawa i don't want to be offensive to anyone um you know but of course i'm biased like this is the place to be because you know we we have the ability to put you in so many of the shows that we're doing on top of what whatever else is going on in Ontario or Canada, and then uh, you know because we're financially successful, we we have the ability to take better care of uh, you know fighters and like fighters can come here and work and still train and like they're they're in the scene they don't have to go do like a construction job or something like that you know where they can make a living you know and make a life and make a future if they want it you know especially after fighting you know and um i think i think we're pretty unique in canada you know i'm confident to say that like we're one of the only places that that can do that mm. you know and and it's catching on because people are moving here now you know and and we saw it with Max Dubois, uh, Max's wife, Eloise. Now they're heavily ingrained in the team. Max is fighting mm -hmm. TJ Laramie and TKO in January. Um, we got Megan Phillips, you know, new addition to the team. Uh, just recently, like literally this week, in the last week, Ashley Nichols, uh, who is, uh, you know, arguably the, the most decorated uh, Muay Thai female in Canada right now. And, uh, you know, then you got some of the coaching staff like Crew Jeff. Hammer Hashe, you got Mark Holst, like, man, it's, you know, the, the talent line is getting pretty deep, you know, and more are coming. And, you know, we're just trying to provide great opportunities for people where they can have a future, you know. And, uh, and I think we're one of the only places in Canada that, uh, that can do that right now.
So uh, you're talking about people uh, who are moving to Ottawa to come and, and train here and learn uh, about running a dojo, ultimately. How, um, how important is that in terms of personal and professional development for, for entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship? Because at the end of the day, is it fair to say, I'm going to make a statement here, running a martial arts dojo or studio is running a business. Is that a fair enough yeah, absolutely. Like, like and, and, you know, don't get me wrong. There's people who don't run it as a business, and you know, uh, and that's fine. Like, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, like you can run it part time. However, we run it full time. You know, we run it full time all the time. And you know, again, you know, something we were talking about earlier is people will come and work here, and they have a great opportunity. Because, you know, they're making a living and it's like going to the university of martial arts business. And if you're smart, and you spend half a decade here, like you're going to have some great tools. You know, if, if you want to go back to another city or go back to another place and open up your academy, you're going to have like, you know, a great understanding of how to do things in a way that is sustainable. Uh, and, and that's equivalent with like getting your master's or you know your your degree really yeah. in, in martial arts business and, right? and, and again like I was saying you know like five years like is not a lot of time and and you know I was saying earlier like the team is what's crucial like even when you leave and you have that time and that time in like I'm f I'm 15 or 16 years in with Pat and there's some stuff and he, he'll say it to me he'll be like hey you know uh you know, well, what do you think about about this topic? You know, and he'll say it because I don't I don't know anything about it. Like, you know, a lot of the taxes and the leases and stuff like that. I'm like, oh my god, my head's hurting. Numbers, you know, like, numbers, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> but and that shows you like 15 years in, and I, and I'm still learning all the time. You know, Pat challenges me and Hammer, the uh, other general manager, um, to really always be learning, always be moving forward, and uh, you know, of course, always be crushing our goals. But like, you gotta crush your goals, but you also have to continue furthering your knowledge and your education and what you're doing, you know. And I and I think that's a that's a big difference between us and a lot of other martial arts schools is a lot of them will stagnate, or they just accept. They reach a certain level and they're just like, okay, you know, like that's good enough, and they just leave it like that. However, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a plant, right? Like you leave the plant, you know, it dies, <laughs> you <Right>. know, <laughs> like you got to keep on. It's all my plants, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, watering it, yeah. taking care of it, you know, nurturing it, giving, you know, love to it and, uh, and it will grow. And, and what part of, like, where does promotion <clears throat> fit in? Because you run a lot of promotions as well. Amateur, professional, grappling, mixed martial arts. How does that fit into the martial arts business aspect of it? Um... Well, for us, like, you know, we run it. It's another another revenue stream, you know. So, you know, that's you know, the obvious, you know. However, um, you know, also it, it, it's a big love for us. And, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, stressful as the events have been in my life, you know, and I took a break for, like, two years. Um, they have been uh, – the, there's something I, lo I love doing, you know. And you, you love seeing like a plan come together, you know, and you're, you're right. creating a great uh, atmosphere and platform for all these athletes, these up and coming athletes to like showcase themselves and get the experience they need to, you know, uh, make the UFC, you know, and uh, looking back, I kind of did it backwards because we didn't have amateur back then. So we started with the pro. You know, that's right, that's right. like the big hundred thousand dollar shows, and yeah. like these are the shows that Josh Hill fought on, Randy Turner fought on, Mark Hole, Sean Pearson, Fabio Holanda, Mitch Gagnon, uh, Jordan Mean. You yeah. know, like uh, yeah. Kick Nate, Cope. Uh, Kick Cope. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, he's a funny guy. Yeah, he yeah. sure is. <laughs> um, and like for me, Valerie Letourneau also fought for us too. Sam Alvey, and you know. You, you sit back and you look and it's like mind blowing, you know, because you're like, all these guys are have made it to the UFC or all these guys are, are prominent figures right. in the scene, right. you know, or in, in, their, in their area, in their scene. And, um, you know, that, that is definitely for me, like, that's the love of it. You know, you're seeing something bigger 
than yourself, you know? And uh, you're seeing the opportunities it gives people. And Rec was a stepping stone for a lot of people to make the UFC. You know, even um, Ian Loveland, you know, his last fight was with us, and then he got picked up by UFC, mm, okay. you know. Where, where, where does Rec, uh, what's happening with Rec now? We talked to you at the last Rec show, and you mentioned you <laughs> didn't want to do one for about a year. Uh, a professional show, anyway. Yeah. You've done some amateur shows. Yeah. Where, where, do, we, where do we sit with uh, Rec Pro? <clears throat> Rec Pro right now, um, we'll have to see. Like, I still plan on holding one a year. Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, like, again, like I'm saying, you know, like, I like putting them on. Mm -hmm. They're a nice show to put on. It's a highly stressful show. You know, the last show we went from, like, the week of went from, like, 11 fights to six fights. Yeah. You know, and you're just shaking your head and you're going, oh, my <laughs> God, you know, like... You know what? Two or three fights you see falling through, but you don't you don't see that many. You know, five fights you're just it, it's hard. You know. However, it was very successful on all areas. You know, like from a show perspective, everybody loved the show. I was very fortunate to have great fights. You know, uh, financially it was extremely successful as well. And uh, you know that makes you take a look at it and say, hey, well, you know, really wasn't that bad. You know, and uh, and I still want to go with you know one a year. Um, Another thing I'm thinking about too, and you know, so Pat and I were talking about it, and I haven't talked to Steph from TKO yet, but I'd love to see TKO come to Gatineau. Mm, right? You know? Wow. So, you know, I'm I'm sure you know uh, we can make that happen. And I say we because you know he's he's going to need support from the community in that, and uh, you know I'm already working with him now, anyways. So, you know, I'd love to see TKO come here too. Wow. So I would still love to have one Rec Pro show a year. You know, uh, just for fun, just because that's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, there's nothing in the works yet. Uh, I w <laughs> what can you tell like, us right uh, here? You know, like we're 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 looking at dates. That's what I can say. Okay. Is, is, wow. is we're looking at dates right now. Awesome. Yeah. You uh, you've competed in in, uh, in mixed martial arts. Obviously, you've competed in, in sports grappling and in, in jujitsu, no gi and and gi. Yes. Uh, but tell us about uh, you. You fought in a. MMA, obviously. Yeah, pro I, I had I only had three fights in professional. And okay. one of them you were promoting the show as well yeah. as fighting. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Knowing yeah. what you know, and, and this was, how, how long ago was this? Uh, I don't I don't even remember. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I guess the question is. He doesn't want to show his yeah. age. Yeah. Fair enough, yeah. fair yeah. enough. The, the question is, what have you learned in, because you've been in this, you've been doing martial arts since you were 15, right? Or even younger than that. Yeah, I started at 10. Yeah, 10. I started at ten, but it was you know it's like most teenagers, right? You're you're on and off, and you're in and out of it, right? Yeah, sure. So ultimately, you've been involved in martial arts for for a long time. Yeah. What uh, going back and looking at your earlier days of, of competition? What would you tell a younger you as, as a competitor? Man, that's that's uh, because you're only going to be I'd, acquiring I'd, more and more knowledge, right? As as, as you get older, yeah. in terms of technique and how do you. How do you behave on the uh, on the tatamis and off the tatamis? But elaborate on that. And I've had this conversation. I've had the conversations with the you know the the up and comers, and I tell them my mistake. And I don't have any regret to be clear because mm -hmm. I'm I'm extremely grateful, happy, blessed for where I'm at right now. However, you know I didn't compete enough. Oh. And yeah, I didn't compete enough. Um, I believe for two reasons. You know, one, there there wasn't a lot of opportunities. You know, but two, I think I think I was afraid to lose. You know, and and that's that's like me, like being straight up honest. You know, because I had some great success in my early jujitsu, and you become like addicted to winning, and you want to continue to win, and and you know, and then I wasn't, you know, and then I fought professional, I lost my first fight, and then. Uh, you know, I was just having a really hard part, a uh, hard time with like the mental aspect, you know, because I went from winning everything and then I just couldn't seem to like, couldn't seem to win a grappling match, let alone a professional MMA fight, you know. And then that's when I took a step back, you know, for a bunch of years. And then, you know, Pat's so funny, like he would be like, hey, uh, yeah, so we're going to this tournament uh, this weekend and I want you to compete, you know. And then I would go, and it would be like, no training, no anything. I'd go win the tournament, you know? And then he, he, he knew what you needed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and it's so funny, you know, like, 
and he had talked to me a lot through this through the years because I toyed with, oh, I'm going to go back, you know, I, I want to try fighting pro one more time, you know, and and uh, you know I had to do a lot of soul searching, asking myself like, well, like why do I really do this, you know, and then and I really 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 love jujitsu, like I really love jujitsu, and that was kind of my first love, mm -hmm. um, and when Pat started teaching me that and. Uh, and when I went back to competing, you know, it's so funny. And we make the the joke, you know, with the guys. It's like, you're you're the fattest you've ever been. You're the oldest you've ever been. You're the most out of shape you've ever been. And then, like, when I started competing in jiu-jitsu again, you know, it was like I couldn't lose. You know, no matter where I competed or, or what I was doing, I always placed top three. And, you know, whether that was the Pan Ams or it was like, you know, in Ontario, I, I never even, I couldn't even dreamt when I was like a white belt or blue belt winning an absolute title. Mm. And then in one year I won like, I don't know, like three or four absolute championships in different tournaments in Ontario. And, uh, and is, I, that, is that just taking the pressure off yourself and going in with a mature attitude that did that? Like, were you beating yourself before? Yeah, absolutely. Mentally? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, and I, and I tell our amateur fighters this, you know, before you step in the ring or the cage, you will have already fought 1,000 times, you wow. know? And, you know, you will have won some, you will have lost some, and, and, you're, and you're, you need to continually um, coach yourself through the, the negative self-talk. And, you know, and, and this is a lot of what, you know, because I did a lot of research on it, a lot of reading on it, and, and um, you know what, like, as soon as in my life that I was like took the pressure off myself you know and it was mostly Pat Pat helped me so much you mm -hmm. know and you know another reason why he's like you know our, you know a great leader you know but you know as soon as I could correct like some of my my self talk and like just my my you know realizing that I'm out there because I love to do it and it's me going against me it's not me going against him you know and then uh, all of a sudden everything started working out so can, can you teach that to the young people because I, I remember being young and people tried to teach me a lot of things and yep. you know that that's the problem with youth is you're hard-headed you're stubborn and you don't listen and you know everything oh, else. I, was, I, I was the most hard-headed yeah. you asked Pat Lee and he will like you will affirm <laughs> yeah, yeah. that I was the most stubborn most hard-headed didn't listen you know and uh you probably say now he's, I still don't listen, you know. <laughs> or maybe I listen a little bit. You yeah, know? Yeah, right. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, I think you know, like well, one of the best things I heard recently was like some lessons you can only learn the hard way, right? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and I think when we try and force, we we try and force these lessons on some of the up and comers, and and like they just they need to learn, you know, and and you need to let them come to you, and when they do. You know, you, you give them the best counsel that they can, you know, and continue to guide them, hmm. you know. And I, and I think, like, you know, I, I heard this saying, you know, when I was younger, you know, it's like you win or you learn, you know. And then the arrogant you or the arrogant me when I was younger was like, no, like, that's what losers say, you know. Like, but as I, as I became older, I'm like, no, like, it's, it's true. And, and the sooner you can adopt that mentality. Mm -hmm like the winning or learning, you know, things get so much better. And then like nothing's negative. You're, you're looking for the silver lining and everything, you know, you're looking for the lesson, you know, so. Speak to us about some of the, uh, the different types of people that train uh, in, in your dojos here in, in the Ottawa region, in terms of uh, who comes to, to, your, to your dojo and uh, why do they train you? Um, we, we have everybody. We have kids starting at three years old. You know, at three? At three. Wow. Yeah, we have our Tiny Tigers class, three, four, and five. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, we have our six, seven, and eight class, our, our kids' jiu-jitsu, and then nine to 12. And, you know, we go right through the teenagers, and we got students in their 60s that train here. Mm. So we have, like, a huge gamut of students. And... And I think, you know, like we're talking about fighting and we're talking about competing, but really the truth is of like, you know, I don't know, whatever, how many members we have, two, 3,000 members, like that's like the 1%, you know, or less, right. you know? Yeah. And, you know, we, we had people walking in yesterday to sign up and, 
you know, dad's like, hey, you know, like, I don't want to, you know, I, I don't have anything to prove. I'm like, hey, it's good. Like, everybody here has nothing to prove. I'm like, it's only, uh, like, you're just here to do the best that you can do, you know? That's right. And you're not here to impress anybody. You know, you're here for you, and that's okay, and we're going to help you, you know? We're going to yeah. help you learn Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or Muay Thai or Krav Maga or, or whatever it is that, that you want to learn, and help you with your goals, you know? And again, tying back into, like, the helping others, you know? Mm -hmm. And through helping others, we all... We all succeed. I think that's a, the basis of martial arts too, right? Like you, you end up humbling yourself because when you start out, you lose, you tap, you know, you give up. That's you have to check your ego. So then, as you build yourself up, I think it, giving back is just kind of a natural progression, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, absolutely, and and it, you'll even see it in the in the culture of our gym. You know, whereas we're going to ask the senior students to help us with the with mm -hmm. the new students. You know, or the f people who are trying class for the first time, mm -hmm. you know, because they can relate to that first time. That mm. first drowning experience yeah. of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, and, and, it, and you know what? When the atmosphere is great and positive and uplifting and, and people are there to help you through it and coach you through it, it makes it so much easier. It makes no, you could complete the hardest task with the right people around you, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that, uh, you know, that's an atmosphere that we create here. Now you have a, a big presence in, in Ottawa gets, you know, obviously mainly on, on the Ottawa side. Mm -hmm. Question is, um, what is it like? Because you also have reach outside of, of, of Ottawa. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what, how would you differentiate the Ottawa, um, martial arts scene from other cities uh, that, that you've been in because you've you travel extensively on behalf of, of your brand your your dojo but how would you characterize Ottawa as opposed to other cities well there's definitely like there's definitely a ton of ton of talent in Ottawa like I I, I would say we would rival Toronto and, and Montreal hmm. you know and there's uh, because like we have academies like every five kilometers in any direction, mm. you know, like up the street here, there's there's Florins, you know, down mm -hmm. the street from uh, the Wama HQ is Arcana K2. Mm. Uh, then you continue to go up. You got Ottawa Fighting Fitness. Like there's N1. Yeah. Um, well, why know. do you think there's so many? What what is it about this area that 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 enables? Well, you know, as you, you're an expert in this field, uh, what is it about Ottawa and, and combat sports? You know, I'm I'm not sure. I can't I can't really answer that question. <laughs> well, you, you know, like, I see you're I, an expert because you, you've been doing it yeah. for, for almost two decades now. Yeah, I would say from a from a business perspective, I'd say that like you know, and and sure we compete with each other, but the rival the rivalries make us thrive. You know, right? Mm. And and I I believe that. Like if we rival each other, then we all we thrive together, you know. And the, it makes your team stronger, builds unity uh, amongst your amongst you and your students and your team. Um, however, I really believe, like if from the business perspective, like our competitors are swimming, soccer, hockey, you know, other things that are that are going on that are that are taking people away. I think that's more of our competitor gymnastics mm. you know for kids mm -hmm. like these things are more of our competitor than um than the other schools are and like people say well that's just for kids well you know the adults have kids and then if they're <laughs> who's bringing the kids to those activities so it right, takes yeah. the adults away too Absolutely, you know yeah. so yeah. i i think that we can thrive because there's so much great talent like all, all the names i've just named like everybody's super talented in in ottawa you know, and uh, and that's why they do thrive. Um, and I think that there's more than enough to go around for everybody, obviously. What, um, give us a, a funny Henzo Gracie story, because we, we know he's, he's, a, he's a very funny guy and, he, in, you know, obviously extremely well respected in his circle, but he's a he's an interesting character. Give us yeah. a funny story, uh, Henzo Gracie story <laughs> in Ottawa. A funny Hanzo Gracie story in Ottawa. I think you would live to tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, ha like, Hanzo is the most easygoing guy 
ever. You know, again, uh, you know, just super grateful for the opportunities to like meet him, hang out with him via Pat, you know, and uh, and like the the funniest story I think for me or like actually you know what you know what's better than a funny story is a good story mm. is like how Pat uh, you know kind of reconnected with Henzo like Pat went to a seminar with Henzo and I think the picture is at the Owama HQ like like a super long time ago okay and then you know Pat was with uh, you know Hickson and then you know uh, Hickson's son passed away and Hickson said listen Pat you're, you're coming out here to you know see me you know really you know like Henzo or Helson affiliate is in New York. You should go check them out. And then, uh, you know, it had been years and Pat had only done a seminar with Henzo, like one time and rolled with him and, you know, went and hung out with him, you know, with everybody. Mm -hmm. And Pat like walked into like Henzo's academy and Henzo recognized him immediately, you know? And like, you know what? I could tell you a funny story, but I think that's a powerful story. Yeah. And like Pat knew, like when he walked into Henzo's and Henzo recognized him at that time, he's like, man, this is the team, you know, yeah. this is the team for me. This guy remembers me from a seminar, like one time, like <laughs> from, from this many years ago, like I think it was six or seven years ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, that is how like our whole affiliation started. And, uh, and I remember because I was training with Pat at that time. And uh, I remember him telling me that story. And I was like, man, I'm like, that's, you know, that's super cool. You know, it's Henzo, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and Henzo remembers him, mm. you know. So um, I would say that's like my good story. Probably a short, funny story is here. When we did the grand opening of this gym here in Canada, he had like a samurai sword. So Henzo had a samurai sword. And they had the ribbon pulled across. And like Henzo goes like this. With the samurai sword through the ribbon right into the tatami, like right <laughs> no, into the like, ground. And you have it on video? I don't know. Ah. I, uh, I don't know, but it, it was everybody's laughing, and it's like, oh my god, you know, <laughs> oh, you know, like pulls the sword out, and everybody's laughing. He's like, it's okay, we'll we'll tape it up later, yeah. you know, like, you know, um, but yeah, yeah like, uh, yeah, yeah the, we we have a lot of uh, a lot of good stories, a lot of good memories, mm. you know. Uh, with this team, you know, and uh, we're just trying to create more, you know. Pat is spreading, like, the love of, like, Hensel Gracie Jiu-Jitsu all over Canada right now with affiliates all over the place as far as, like, Saskatoon, wow. you know. So it's going great. Is it fair to say that he uh, is one of the strongest uh, in terms of promoting Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and advocating on behalf of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Canada? Is, is it fair to say that, to give yeah. him that that yeah, Pat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like I think, I think people. Uh, I, I don't think I know this. P people don't understand him, or they, or they misunderstand him, or they misinterpret him. But Pat believes in jujitsu, you know. And you know, Francis, and we, and we were talking about this earlier. You know, the North uh, Northern Ontario Martial Arts Development. Mm -hmm. Like he is trying to bring the best in the world to the North of Ontario to give them a great opportunity. You know, 10 time yeah. world champion, Hodger Gracie, mm. it, you know, is going to be there teaching. And, and like, I don't, I that's don't, in April, right? Or is yes, that, that's okay. right. Yeah. Okay. And like, I don't know what else somebody has got to do. Like he's, he's lined up like almost every pioneer instructor in Ontario to go teach her. You know, you got Dan Maroney, Marco Costa, Fernando Zulek, um, who, who else? Richard Nanku. Like, wow. like these names that mm -hmm. have been in the game mm -hmm. since like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu has like, you know, been around in Ontario. Like you, if you know these people, you know, some of these names, like, you know, they've been, they've been doing it for, you know, over 15 years or 20 wow. years, you know, we're coming up on a new year, 2017. Um, what's, what's next for you guys? I mean, you guys are always barreling forward. What's next for you and, uh, OMA? Everybody's got to keep an eye on us. Because we got we got some big stuff coming down the pipe, you know. You hear that? Um, <laughs> and I don't think people are going to believe it, you know. Damn. And, and, and I mean, you're, you're teasing a bit. Yeah. Not to, is there anything you can share? We're going to well, dig a little bit. Here. Like, like you know, I would say, wh whatever you've seen us do, you know, it's going to continue, but but bigger and faster. You know, so like if, if you know, you, you saw us hold this many shows last year, 
you're probably going to see the minimum the same amount of shows next year if not more you know and i think you're going to see some larger scale events you know like you're already seeing it now with nomad 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 is huge you know shout out to red star sponsoring nomad red star. <laughs> um, um but like nomad is going to be huge like that's a that's a th three-day event can you, you tell know? us w which cities in northern ontario you're you're it's going to be that's going to be in sudbury okay. nomads in sudbury um but like we're, we're just looking at you know i'll keep it that simple whatever you've seen us do open gyms run shows you know it, if it's not going to get bigger it's going to get better because i'm you know and i'm going to be honest like we're doing this stuff and we're putting it to, to, together and we're pumping it out like at a at a high rate mm -hmm. you know but now we're looking at it and we're like okay so ground games how do we make ground games better how do we make it more presentable how do we make it more su sustainable how do we make how do we give more of the wow for the ground games how do we do it for the rec amateur mm -hmm. okay or rec mma and tie boxing you know am i am i going to continue with the rec mma and tie boxing or am i just going to do rec mma mm -hmm. you know um you know, and more schools, you know, that's all, uh, I can't say anything other than that, <laughs> but I could just say that there will probably be more schools and like, you know what, like, and, and, and we say this to each other, we're not, we're taking a break, we're not opening another one, you know, right. like three, four years, you know, and then uh, opportunities come up and it's like, you got to take a look at it, you got to take a risk, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, but the opportunity is there and you're like, man, everything lines up you need to take it you know i'm going to take a chance well listen I, I know your time is super valuable and uh we appreciate you giving this time to us thank you so much yeah i know thank you guys i really appreciate it i'm a big fan of uh, what you guys are doing and uh, i hope everybody that is following you guys continues to follow because I, I think you guys are doing a great thing like you're giving the little guys a chance you know that's awesome so. it's a labor of love for us yeah. so we appreciate it. capital combat parlay <laughs>